be do good day. We begin with a new topic this day. One that I believe you will find as interesting, as fascinating as I do. When there have been moments for our personal interaction, I have the benefit of hearing from you about your family members, about your friendships, what makes them unique and special. Today I will give you a glimpse into Gaia's relationship as well. And as other moments bring us together, it is my hope that I will give to you the same advantage regarding other family members as well, offering you information and perhaps a few tidbits here or there that you would not have considered on your own. Today I wish to tell you about my relationship with the moon. And as I do so, it will also reveal other facets of your relationship with the moon as well. For here is a family member that we both share in common. One that is very important to us both. One that affects the life of the earth of Gaia and one that affects your life very much as well. The moon is not simply an object that illumines the night sky. You are aware of it through your mythology, through your science, and in some ways through other sciences that have come to be pseudo-sciences, though they were not so long ago, namely astrology. But today we will delve into other aspects of the moon and the many relationships that it offers, the many advantages that it offers, what it represents, how to develop a deeper relationship with it, and even a little bit about your past and your future related to the moon. Remember that everything that humanity is and does affects the earth, and greatly so. So as you develop a deeper relationship with the moon, you also develop a deeper relationship with the earth and vice versa. The moon then affects you on the mental realm, on the physical realm, in very many emotional ways, and of course, in a very deep spiritual sense as well. The same is true for the earth. All of these happening all at once, all in the same moment. As the moment unfolds then, and we develop this subject for you, you will come to know much more about it. To begin with, let us see what the moon represents for both humanity and, in many ways, the Earth, Gaia, as well. The moon represents the absence of a strategy, and I will describe this for you. A strategy is how you see yourself in life. It is who you are. It is the profiles that you present in life. It is the personality. It is how you view yourself and think of yourself. The moon illuminates these for you, shining lights into the different pockets or places of your strategy that have least light. Or better put, the moon shines its light where otherwise there would be shadow. So the moon represents the void strategy or the aspects of life that you have not quite figured out yet. The places where you are still coming to know yourself, to become acquainted with yourself. The moon represents the regions of space, for instance, that are not defined for you yet. So here you are able to establish new patterns, new relationships with yourself. While many times the sun represents what you already know about yourself. The moon then represents what you do not know. 
The moon obscures light at times, showing to you many different faces, whether of your own being, of your own moods, for instance, or many different potentials and potentialities. But it does not endorse one strategy or one view of yourself. It is always changing. It is always giving you the opportunity to dream by its light, to remake an idea or a position or anything that you have held firm about yourself. It does the same for the earth too. It allows the earth to evolve creatively. It allows the earth also to see its own reflection. So the moon in some ways acts like a mirror, both for humanity and for the earth, but showing a different reflection every night, a different possibility, a different way to hold itself. At the same time, that changing ability, that creativity, well, it can hold firm in some ways. As you know, the moon is in synchronous rotation with the earth. This means that the moon is always showing the same face to the earth. It is always showing the same potential. So if you begin to observe an idea or a pocket or a shadow, the moon will continue to present that to you. In some ways, acting like a computer that stores that same information for you so that you can recall it again and again, either when the same face presents it or when the same moment in the year presents itself or even at special moments where eclipses come forward. Eclipses allow both the earth and humanity to remake themselves and quickly. Eclipses allow you to shake up what you have created and to say, I will believe I will take a new canvas, I will paint a new picture, I will have a new outlook, I will begin again. And so eclipses change or erase temporarily the face of the moon, the earth, the sun, allowing you to begin again. Because these eclipses bring about new beginnings, it is known that eclipses bring static or sometimes chaotic moments as well. Because in essence, yes, they allow for endings and beginnings to take place very quickly. This affects all things upon the earth as well. For instance, where the earth is concerned and there are eclipsial movements, the species upon the earth are highly affected. Those species that, for instance, may be thinking about becoming extinct, these have much to evaluate during times of eclipses. And, as well, those species that have a new possibility to be born to develop or to evolve upon the earth, this also acts as a very quick accelerator. During eclipsial movements, the earth can slough off much of what it no longer needs and it can revitalize itself very quickly. Humanity then is able to do the same. You would not notice it, but many of your old cells of your body die off much more quickly during times of eclipse. Likewise, many new cells, much new life is born during this time as well. The moon also represents for humanity and for the earth the past and the future. Well, one look at the moon would show to you then how desolate it appears to be. And yet, what does humanity most want to do? To revisit the moon, to colonize the moon, to study it, to establish itself there, to rediscover its minerals there, to reestablish a relationship there. 
And so here you have again an idea of the past and the future. And so where humanity is concerned, this is also true. The moon allows you in many ways access to your past, past thoughts, past ideas, past lives, always stored there. Always the resources are there. They are present. They are being held there for you until you choose to return there. In many ways, your dreams are held there. Those dreams that you placed there long ago, the ones that today perhaps you think are no longer possible, those dreams, those are still there for you. The ones you dreamed as a child, those childish thoughts of things that you thought were possible and later said, oh no, that was just my imagination. Well, those, they are there still as well. For the earth, it is the same. The moon is part of the earth's past and it is very much a part of its future as well. The moon has its own sentience, you know. The moon is able to think and feel and in many ways act on its own. However, the moon chooses at this time to be captive to the earth, to be in service in many ways to the earth, and the earth is also in service to the moon. It is not simply the gravitational fields that hold these two partners together. It is much more than that. It is a love affair of sorts. It is a science that both require the other in order to further their own life and their own purpose. The same is true of you, where the moon is concerned. Much of your future lies there as well, and we will continue to study this as we continue the subject. The moon also represents then undiscovered terrain where you are concerned. The parts of you that you simply do not know yet. You are aware that there are these places in the brain, parts of the mind, organs of the body that you do not know why you have them or why they are important. But they will be revealed to you. The same is true of the moon its resources and what it has to offer the earth will continue to be revealed. The moon is undiscovered terrain as well because earlier, if you remember, we said that it is in synchronous rotation with the earth, always showing its same face. But what of the dark side of the moon or the part that you can never see? Well, that is the undiscovered terrain. That is the part of you that you know is there, that you would like to know, you believe that it may be fertile ground. You believe there might be creativity and resources there if you could only reach them, if you could only know for sure. Well, one day you will come to see what is on the dark side of the moon, and then there will be light shed upon it. The same is true with your own resources and your own abilities. Eventually you will come to see everything that you are, everything that you can do and be, and light will be shed upon all of these resources as well. As you know, the moon has been associated with your dreams or the dream state. So yes, we will acknowledge that as well. The moon is your facilitator where dreams are concerned. It facilitates your ability to enter the dream state. It holds many doorways open for you, for you to come and go as you like, from the waking state to the sleep state to the dream state and more. The moon can help you interpret your dreams. It can show you where the value is there. As you know, dreams are rather symbolic in nature. Well, the moon is symbolic to the earth as well. It is one of the few planets, at least in this solar system, that only have one moon. In your own way, then, you also have one moon or one dream state. 
And here I will tell you that there are other beings from other worlds that have many different abilities to dream, different kinds of dream states, not simply phases of sleep as humanity has or different phases of dream, but truly different dream states, completely different in which other beings become other beings in these dream states. So the moon is your facilitator of this. And as you come to know and understand and explore your dreams much more, you will see that the moon can help you interpret the symbology of your dreams or to dream in ways that will bring wellness to your waking state and creativity to it as well. It affects the earth in the same way. Perhaps you have not thought about whether Gaia also dreams or not. So the answer is yes, the earth also dreams and in symbolic ways as well. But the dreams of a sentient world, of a celestial body, are somewhat different than the dreams of humanity. And so they are stretched, if you like, much further. Gaia's family and Gaia's relationship to space is much more expansive than that of the Earth. So while or how the Earth dreams connects it to other worlds and other dimensions in ways that, well, the normal relationship with humanity and its other elements or kingdoms simply do not allow. So it is the Earth's unique and special relationship with the moon that allows this as well. Related to the moon, then, is your emotional well-being. Well, the Earth's sentience is always in its emotional wellness as well as in its awakened wellness, for the sentience takes all of this into consideration at once. But where humanity is concerned, your emotions seem to you as if they are separate from your thoughts or your mental capacity, for instance. So it is the moon that assists you in regulating your emotional well-being, in restoring it, in resetting it, in bringing to you awareness through emotional doorways that you would not have otherwise. Humanity has in some ways become overly dependent upon its mind as its main resource, upon its waking mind, upon its consciousness. But many times as it yields to greater and greater knowledge and information and consciousness, it sacrifices something in terms of emotions and the emotional well-being. So the moon, in its own way, makes certain that you are in your wellness or in an emotional state that can be restored. Your emotional well-being then brings about certain doorways or understandings to self or the deeper self that the mind on its own would not allow. It is a deeper doorway, it is a deeper well to understanding and it is the moon that brings this forward for you. And in its own way, and during certain phases, as we said earlier, it makes this almost unavoidable. So that you can close or segment your mind, your thoughts at times, but when your emotions feel something and when your heart tugs at you the way it does, sometimes it is the moon speaking, dealing, directly with your emotional body, making certain that it remains soft, pliable, making certain that it is alive and in its aliveness. The mind may try to shut itself off from thoughts or patterns, relationships or decisions, but ah, the moon in its own wisdom does not always allow this, does it? The moon then also represents that which has been captured but can also be set free. Well, in some ways, perhaps this relates to your soul. 
In some ways your soul has been captured then and feels as if it is tethered to the earth. The soul that is free, that can be and do anything it chooses to be, is at the same time tethered to the body, to your thoughts. You are aware that you have a soul. You can reach to it. It reaches to you. But it cannot necessarily pull you, tug you out of this lifetime or out of this body. So while you are upon the earth, the soul regulates everything about your life and your lifetime upon the earth, making all of your experiences worthwhile, introspective when possible, and the soul and the moon have their own unique relationship one to the other, each one allowing insight and growth. So the soul is captive to your body, but willing to be so. The moon is also captive or captured by the earth in its gravitational field, but also willing to be so. Perhaps if you will study certain scientific principles, you would know that the moon is moving away from the earth, one little smidge at a time and more at times, moving away so that one day it will fall away from the earth and have a different kind of life. Well, likewise, you too are moving away from the earth, away from the earth plane, away from the third dimension and to the others, always seeking freedom, freedom from the soul, freedom of expression, freedom, divine will and free will and what it will be. So the moon is your partner in this, it is your ally in this. It is symbolic of that. The moon is your connection to space and what is out there. When you look out to space, you see the stars at night and you see the moon, sometimes whole, sometimes in part, depending upon its phase and the face that it chooses to show to you. So the moon calls to you. It says, look at this light. Look at the moonlight. See how different it is than the sunlight. See how different you are at night than you are during the day. See that your nighttime thoughts are unique and different than your daytime thoughts. So the moon represents your more original thoughts. In some ways, your more creative thoughts not those that you think about while you are employed or at your daily adventures at your job or at the variety of roles that you play, but also those thoughts that are out there. What is out there? What is in space? What is in the deep night? What are your deepest truths, your deepest insights? All of this also contributes to your well-being to your creativity, to how you see yourself, to how you plan your future. Your future is out there, and so is the moon. I will tell you that while humanity studies many planets now, the discovery of planets and many different worlds, and what is most interesting to the celestial bodies, I will tell you that sometimes there is much more to notice, much more to study where the moons of the celestial bodies are in relationship to each other. Remember that the moon is a very bright object in the sky. Just after the sun, it is the moon that occupies most of your space or sky watching. It appears to be the very same size as the sun, owing to, well, the very peculiar and specific distance between the earth and the moon. This makes it so that at specific times of the day, the moon and the sun appear to be almost equal in size. Of course, it is well known that that is not the case. But there is a unique relationship associated with this as well. 
and it has to do with solar eclipses. This particular specific distance allows the moon to cover the sun almost and perfectly at specific times of the year owing to the solar eclipses then. And in these moments both the sun and the moon influence the earth perfectly making all moments of synchronicity possible for both the earth and for humanity as well. So it is the moon and the sun in this way that influences the calendar as you measure it. Now you may think that the calendar only has to do with how days are numbered, but oh no, it has actually much more to do with the lifespan of the earth. It also has to do with the lifespan of humanity then as well. And I will tell you that if your calendar were numbered differently than it is now, humanity might once again live a much longer lifespan than it has been reduced to now. This, of course, is yet to be seen. And there will come a time in this century or the next century, relatively a short amount of time by Gaia standards, that the calendars will be revisited and remade. And then humanity will have greater health and wellness and longevity again. So here we have then a little bit of background and current information that may be well suited to you and how you can use your relationship with the moon to better yourself in many ways. Develop a further relationship with the moon based upon all that has been said in this retelling thus far. You know you can speak directly to the moon just as you speak or communicate directly with the earth. It will hear you, you know. It will hear you and if you listen carefully, if you are gentle in your movements and accepting of it, you will see that the moon will touch you. You will see that your moon will tingle your skin in just a little way to let you know that it has heard you. It has felt you. And if you allow it to, it will speak to you and with you. You will find that you will have a deeper connection with the moon in the nighttime hours. It does not need to be so. But this has simply more to do with humanity and how humanity associates the moon. It associates its presence with the nighttime sky. Of course, the moon does not go anywhere while you are enjoying your day or your sunlight hours. It is still just as present in the sky as you imagine it to be. But because humanity imagines the moon to belong to the night, this is when you may have greater communication with it. You may tell the moon about your dreams. You may ask the moon to assist you with these. But that assistance must come in the ways that the moon works, which loosely is what we have described to you and this speaking. So, for instance, you could not necessarily ask the moon to help improve a test score. However, you can work with the moon to dream symbolically that you are very successful at completing tests and tasks. So each one to their own language, you see, each tool to the best of its ability. As we continue to explore the moon, it is very important to note that humanity's relationship to the moon is a very ancient, ancient one. So while it seems to you that in your very near history that humanity has just begun to visit the moon or take vessels and vehicles to the moon or to have had its first lunar landings, please remember 
that this only has to do with your modern history or the history that you remember today. In your ancient history, if you were able to access it accurately, you would then have your records of ancient space man, not only those that you would consider extraterrestrials or those that have visited the Earth, but also those that are from the Earth. Yes, human, space man, human, moon man, that have taken themselves there based on technologies, ancient technologies, that in some ways are more modern than those of modern man. Why? Well, the difference with ancient man is that he was more able to dream than you do currently. For instance, I bring to your attention the aboriginals or some of the tribal man. They understand the dream state. It is a tool for them. They understand how to enter the dream state, how to use it, how to access it. And so ancient man that was not so concerned with what to do with every waking moment and how to use it to its physical advantage. Well, in this case, the advantages were just as great in the dream state. So dreaming man who dreamed of going to the moon was able to create the resourceful ideas and the assistance of how to go there, how to get there, for purposes that were current then. When they did not know how to do that, ancient man invited others from other worlds to the earth to share this knowledge with them. So please consider that while you look to the skies and wonder when and who will descend from them and what world they may come from. Ancient man already had quite a relationship with others from certain other worlds and could even time their visits. They understood when were the opportune times to navigate the skies or the space relative to the earth. There are certain cosmic doorways that open here and there at unique times. And ancient man, more than modern man, with its technological advances, knew how to time these events and how to draw these beings from other places and thereby created their own advances of long ago. So while humanity is now poised for the next jump in its ability, well, you will notice then that all of these abilities were also true long ago. It is not to say in criticism of what humanity forgets, but more to continue to open doors and open ideas that will lead to new resources. And that is the segue into the next aspect of this particular subject. Although daily humanity dwells upon its problems upon the earth, upon its resources or the potential lack of resources upon the earth, there are many upon the earth, those who study potentials for now and potentials for the future that are already far and away studying all that nearby space can provide in terms of resources that might be next or necessary for the earth. So, for instance, there are those scientists and theologians, by the way, that study what is present upon the moon that can be mined, that can be brought to the earth, that can be owned, that can be bought and sold, that can be controlled. At the same time, it is also the study of all that you would consider nearby space objects, even those larger asteroids, for they too have many, many resources upon them, not to mention even those of a diamond-like quality. 
So those that study what to do about these particular resources are already hard at work planning how to take advantage of these. Perhaps you know, for instance, that the race is on for the resources that are in the Arctic and the Arct Antarctic oceans. The polar ice caps that are melting and melting quickly make many more of these resources accessible. And so travel is underway now to hurry to claim these. Those that are atop the oceans and atop ice or land in these area, as well as those that were previously unattainable, unreachable beneath the waves because of the depth of the ice. That no longer being the case, or not being the case for much longer, there are many, both countries and larger corporations, that in some cases are much richer than countries that are already claiming these flags made of every material that you might imagine, theoretically and physically, have been constructed. Some of these very thick metal plates so that the little flag might not drift away into the ocean. Buoys and other such markers to say this has been claimed or that already belongs elsewhere. And so as you might imagine there will be struggle for this in the oceans, in the ice and all that is there. Previously uncharted or previously no man's land will not be the case much longer. And there will be struggle for some of these resources, for some are plenty and very worthwhile and much more easily attained than what has been possible at other places upon the earth that have become very heavily and in some ways overly populated by man. There are certain treaties that govern these oceans, these places, but many of these were not written in very specific ways because after all, who thought that anyone could go there or would go there? Well, now that that is the case and the race is on, well, the non-specific nature of what was put forward will allow others to take advantage of this and as you might imagine, some will move quickly to the forefront and others are in fear that they will be left behind. If this is true of resources that are upon the earth, imagine then that those that plan for resources beyond the earth have already planned for this as far into the future and as far as they see that these resources will take them. So, for instance, there are treaties relative to space, and these are fairly specific, I will tell you already. The Outer Space Treaty is one of these, and of course there is a more formal term for it, but it governs not only the nearby space that surrounds the Earth, it also governs the variety of activities or states of exploration relative to this space, near space, outer space, which also includes the moon and certain other celestial bodies. So lest you think we are still speaking of the Arctic or the Antarctic resources, oh no, we are now directly speaking of the space that surrounds the Earth and of the moon as well. So there are treaties in place that form the basis of international space law. So there is terrestrial law and there is space law, so that you will know the difference. And these are similar, but not nearly the same. So if you imagine that you have certain law-abiding principles that affect the earth, these may or may not relate to other celestial bodies in how a human, a corporation, 
or a country might comport themselves in space. One of these treaties began its signature around the time of your original lunar landing and at the time that it all seemed very possible that humanity had indeed moved into the space age well already many countries then began to sign or form the treaty not wanting to be left behind but there were others then that simply deemed it more appropriate to wait and see perhaps they signed the treaty but did not completely ratify it believing that there would be others later that would be more to their advantage this particular space treaty for instance i will tell you bars the placement of nuclear weapons or any other weapons of mass destruction in orbit around the earth it bans them from being installed on the moon or on any other celestial body or any other station that is in outer space but you know humanity is very accustomed to its loop holes and so you might imagine that space is full of holes of many kinds including loop holes this particular treaty as well limits the use of the moon and other celestial bodies and insists that these are for peaceful purposes it does not allow for the testing of weapons of any kind military or otherwise it does not allow for military maneuvers to take place upon the moon it does not allow for the establishing of military bases or other installations or other fortifications ah but the treaty itself does not prohibit for instance certain scientific studies related to the foregoing or to the placement of conventional weapons in orbit so here are some loopholes for you to consider the treaty also states that the exploration of outer space shall be done in benefit to all countries and that it is therefore free to exploration and use by all states and communities of consciousness well there you have the benefit and there you have the basis by which many corporate structures will then explore space but to their own means perhaps the treaty forbids governments from claiming well certain celestial resources such as the moon for themselves the moon is deemed to be of common heritage to mankind this is an important term and it is one that will come about much later what does common heritage to mankind mean will it be necessary to determine what is man kind or what else can be appropriated by the terms of sovereignty or what means whether one visits the moon or occupies the moon we study these terms and i bring them to your awareness for the time because this is humanity's next destination in space and it comes about much sooner than you think while humanity currently considers all that is taking place upon the earth of an economic standpoint of a scientific standpoint of a political standpoint there are those that have already moved far beyond the earth and its resources and are already considering all that is taking place in space and around space so this becomes a very important subject to consider 
It is not only the earth that belongs to humanity or humanity that belongs to the earth. It also then belongs to the moon. It also belongs to space. And this is the direction that humanity is now moving in favor of. Please consider that humanity has a very specific and important relationship with the earth and that this relationship will now become even more important as will the relationship with the sun that is also changing in how it supports or resources the earth but that we will begin to explore on another day as for now we will stay relative to the moon and the earth. I tell you as well that there are other treaties relative to the moon. Aside from the one that has been called the Outer Space Treaty, there is the Moon Treaty, the Space Preservation Treaty, and others. You might imagine then that there is great importance relative to the moon and its resources. Humanity is moving there and quickly, as I have said, and very soon it will determine that there are new and different kinds of vehicles that without much difficulty can reach the moon in a very short sequence of time. Once this is established, there will be found other resources that are of value, useful upon the earth, those that use less energy, for instance, than those that are more difficult to mine upon the earth. So there comes a time then when responsibility for the moon and for the activities that are there will become prominent. These responsibilities will be carried out by both governmental and non-governmental entities and agencies that are even now forming. Ask yourself then what kind of authorization, what kind of supervision will govern these particular authorities? What will govern them from contaminating the space who or what will hold these entities or agencies liable for damage that may be caused in space or as humanity begins to explore the space near to the earth. These topics I offer to your consciousness, not because you need be concerned, but because it is your earth, it is your moon, and because where you turn your awareness to these subjects, you will also begin to draw information to yourself regarding them, not simply because Gaia has invited the subject, but because now it is placed within your consciousness, giving you choice in how you draw to yourself your next choices, your next ideas, any creative stance that you take. Humanity returns to the moon soon. It is time to rediscover its relationship with the moon. And you will see that in its own way, the moon will begin to issue its own invitation in this regard. Sometime next year, the moon will begin to have a new and different glow about it at certain times. This would be a fine time for you to remember your deep and ancient relationship with the moon, the earth, the sun, with all of your celestial origins. Already you know that the earth and your time upon the earth is changing quickly as you move from one age to the next. So all of the celestial bodies then wish to further and develop their relationship with you, to communicate with you, to commune with you, to advise, to guide, to counsel, to share with you. 
and the moon is no exception in this regard. So today I carry to you the moon's greetings to you. I convey these to you. I bring these to you, placing them if possible within your heart if you will accept them there. Easily I lay them at your feet or near your awareness, your consciousness for you to take them up by the time of your own choosing as well. The moon's glow will speak to you and you will see that you will begin to dream again in a different capacity. You will begin to dream of a different future. You will begin to dream of the new age and as you do it will begin to change how you place yourself in this state of being, in this waking state, in this present age, the moon will assist you in beginning to close the door to one age and in opening to the next. Remember that before you can live something, you must conceive of it. And at times, before you can accurately conceive of something, it is appropriate to dream it into being as well. So the moon, sweet one, is your friend, a dear companion to you and to Gaia. And so we close. I bid you good day.